Now on to the final lap of the program, our legend of the week. Immaculate footballer, imperial defender, immortal hero of 1966 FIFA World Cup, first English man to raise the World Cup aloft, favorite son of London's East End, finest legend of West Ham United, national treasure, master of Wembley, lord of the game, captain extraordinary, gentleman of all time, anyone who visits the new Wembley Stadium and sees the bronze statues of our legend of the week standing majestically over Wembley way may have happened to read the above inscription that this man was a truly remarkable footballer. Both Pele and Franz Beckenbauer rated him as a gentleman, friend and the greatest defender they have ever played against. Former British Prime Minister Tony Blair said of him, he was a superb footballer. If you wanted a role model from public life, he is a pretty good one to take. England's 1966 FIFA World Cup winning coach Sir Alf Ramsey described him as follows, my captain, my leader, my right hand man. He was the spirit and the heartbeat of the team a cool, calculating footballer I could trust with my life. He was the supreme professional, the best I have ever worked with. Without him, England would never have won the World Cup. So what made him so special? For many, he was the complete defender, strong in the air, clinical in the tackle and boasting impeccable distribution. He was no sprinter but his ability to read the game meant that he was rarely caught out for pace. Indeed, the legendary Celtic manager Jock Stein joked there should be a law against him. He knows what is happening 20 minutes before everyone else. He joined West Ham United as a 15-year-old and after progressing through the ranks, made his debut at the age of 17 against Manchester United in 1958, replacing his mentor Malcolm Allison, who was suffering from tuberculosis at the time. Two years later, he received his first call-up to the England under-23 squad and on the 20th May 1962 made his full international debut against Peru in a warm-up game for the FIFA World Cup. It proved to be a good day's work. Not only did the three Lions run out 4-0 winners over their host in Lima, but he did enough to impress manager Walter Winterbottom, who duly took him to Chile in 1962, where he played in all four of his country's matches during their run to the quarterfinals. He was just 22 when he captained England for the first time in a 4-2 win over Czechoslovakia in 1963, a position he held permanently from the summer of 1964 until his final international, almost a decade. FIFA World Cup winner 1966 made 108 appearance for England and scored two goals. Appeared at three FIFA World Cups, 1962, 1966 and 1970. His club career spanned from 1958 to 1974 with West Ham United. 1974 to 1977 Fulham United. San Antonio Thunders 1976. Settled Saunders 1978. In August 2008, West Ham United officially retired number six shirt as a mark of respect for him. Born on the 12th of April 1941 as Mo Robert Frederick, he passed on on the 14th of February 1993 at the age of 51. Our legend of the week is no other person than Sir Bobby Moore of England. Though he is late now, but his legacy is assured. He has left a footprint that can never be erased. A true son of London is and Sir Bobby Moore. That is all time can permit us on the program. We hope you enjoyed the show. On behalf of the entire crew, I'm Friday Adiku. Since see you next week for another exciting moment on Football Classic. God bless Nigeria. Bye for now.